NSK Iraq against Secretary of State of the Home Department. At the outset, I should explain that the court is making an anonymity order in this case. That's usual in asylum cases because of the risks which asylum seekers may run if returned to their home countries. The court accordingly orders that no one should publish the name of the appellant or any information liable to result in his identification. The appellant is one of a number of claimants who applied to the High Court on the 8th of June for permission to bring an application for judicial review of the Home Secretary's decision that certain persons, including themselves, who have made claims for asylum in the United Kingdom should be removed to Rwanda so that their claims for asylum can be determined by the Rwandan authorities. In bringing that application, the appellant's lawyers were performing their proper function of ensuring that their clients are not subjected to unlawful treatment at the hands of the government. On the 10th of June, Mr. Justice Swift granted the claimants permission to apply for judicial review. That application is expected to be heard in July. It is at that hearing that the question will be decided whether the Home Secretary's policy is lawful or not. I should make it clear that neither the courts below nor this court are deciding that question at present. Having decided that the question whether the Home Secretary's policy is lawful should be decided at a later date, the question then arose as to what was to happen in the meantime. The judge had to decide whether the balance of convenience favoured allowing the claimants to be removed to Rwanda in pursuance of the Home Secretary's policy, or favoured the appellants being allowed to remain in this country until the lawfulness of the policy had been decided, in which case the judge would have to grant an interim injunction to prevent their removal. He decided that question in favour of the Home Secretary, essentially on the basis that the importance of her being able to implement her policy in the meantime outweighed the significance of the problems which the claimants might suffer if removed to Rwanda. In forming that view, the judge considered a volume of evidence, including evidence relating to the Memorandum of Understanding and Note Verbal entered into between the UK government and the government of Rwanda. The claimants then appealed to the Court of Appeal. It refused the repeal on June the 13th. As it explained, its role in relation to applications for interim injunctions is very limited. Put shortly, it was not entitled to interfere with the judge's decision to refuse to grant an interim injunction unless he had erred in law or had conducted his evaluation in a manner which was unreasonable. The court held that those tests were not met and therefore refused the appeal. There is now only one of the original claimants, the appellant, who is still facing removal. The appellant has applied to this court for permission to appeal against the decision of the Court of Appeal. He wishes to appeal on the following ground, that the Court of Appeal erred in law in holding that the judge was entitled, when conducting his assessment of a balance of convenience, to proceed on the assumption that the government of Rwanda would comply with the assurances provided in the Memorandum of Understanding. This court is not persuaded that the Court of Appeal arguably committed such an error. It did not hold that the judge was entitled to assume that the government of Rwanda would comply with a Memorandum of Understanding and the judge did not make such an assumption. He did attach weight to the assurances given in that document 
and was entitled to do so in the light of the evidence before him. The degree of weight which he gave to that evidence was a matter for his assessment, as the Court of Appeal correctly held. One related matter which was of concern to this court was whether, if the appellant were to succeed at the hearing proposed for July in his challenge to the lawfulness of his removal to Rwanda, he would then be returned to this country where it would follow that his asylum claim ought properly to be dealt with. In that regard, the government legal department have informed the court on behalf of the Home Secretary as follows. If the High Court were to make an order that the Secretary of State for the Home Department should use her best endeavors to ensure the appellant's return to the UK from Rwanda following a trial, and there were no stay of any such judgment, then the Secretary of State for the Home Department would seek to comply with that order. There are arrangements for return of relocated individuals in Article 11 of the Memorandum of Understanding, which provides that following a request made by the United Kingdom, Rwanda will take all reasonable steps in accordance with international human rights standards to make a relocated individual available for return to the United Kingdom, should the United Kingdom be legally obliged to facilitate that person's return. In the light of that assurance, and for the reasons that I've explained, the court refuses permission to appeal. The court will now adjourn.